Hey, what's up motivators? Taryn here. If you are a beginner endurance athlete competing in any running race, any triathlon, duathlon, swim run, marathon swim, trail run, cycling event, one of the biggest things that's going to hold you back is improper training nutrition and then race day nutrition. The good news is that it is very, very easy to figure out if you have the right system. Not having the right nutrition in your training is going to cause you to underperform in your training because you're not going to have the building blocks to execute the training session correctly and you're not then going to be able to absorb it. Then come on race day, if you don't have a proper nutrition plan, you're not going to have the energy required to perform at your best. So what we're going to go through today is a complete system that you can use for any endurance event that you want. It's going to cover what you take before and during your training and your racing. It's going to include everything that you need to wrap your head around what should you be doing in this big world of endurance training and racing nutrition. Let's dive into it. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system. A system that's meant for us amateurs who want to be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I want to share some of the tips from it today. There are two really big instances where I realized how important it was to get your nutrition dialed in. As I was first training for a marathon swim of about 27 kilometers in open water, I had realized how important it was to start getting my nutrition nailed down because I was going to be out there for seven or eight hours. In my training, as I got past about two hours, my stomach was just aching, I was farting in my training wetsuit. It was pretty gross. Fortunately, I found a book that outlined the entire science of how many calories you actually expel when you are swimming, biking, and running, and then how many calories you need to replace. So from that, I created this nutrition calculator that we've written a book about, we've had as a free download. There will be a link in the description below to this, and we'll talk about this in a second. But when I created this calculator, everything all of a sudden felt right. I was able to go and do my two, three, four, five hour training swims for that marathon swim. Fast forward a couple of years as I started training for my first half Ironman, again, I was finding that my legs were getting really tired on any bike ride longer than about two hours. I went back to this calculator that I had created at the time, just an Excel spreadsheet and started looking at nutrition just from the standpoint of like, okay, hey, how much do I need to take every single hour? And boom, instantly I could start gaining endurance really quickly and not feeling beat up later in the day. I could back up training sessions over and over because I was giving my body the building blocks to execute the workout as it was intended and absorb it. So let's dive into this. You can play around with this through the link in the description below. But the first step in figuring out your endurance training and racing nutrition is to come to a calculator like this and you select the sport that you are looking at doing. It works for swimming, cycling, running, and all distances of triathlon. And why this is really nice is because it's customized to your particular weight and your particular effort level. All of the endurance sports nutrition products out there that say, well, you need 60 grams of carbs every hour, or you can push it up to 90 or 120. It's all moot because none of that is relevant to your exact situation. You have a particular weight and you have a particular pace that is going to dictate how many calories you are actually going to burn. And based on that, we know that you should be trying to replace about 25% of them. So let's say that I was going to do a half Ironman and my weight is around 170 pounds. Uh, this is going to ask for my estimated swim time. I would probably be around 33 minutes for this. And my estimated total time right now would probably be around a 440. Once I hit submit, this is going to tell me how many calories I'm going to burn based on my weight and my pace levels and then how many calories to consume. So this is going to work for 
any triathlon that you're actually doing or any training session for one of the standalone sports or one of the sports within triathlon. So as a starting point, you need to take this number of the target calories you consume in your training or your racing, and then we're going to talk about the system about how to get those calories in. Okay, so what we're going to go through here is training nutrition and race nutrition. We're going to divide the training nutrition up into speed workouts, endurance workouts, and race building workouts. We're going to divide it into what you take before and what you take during. We're going to look at race nutrition for swim, bike, run events and swim, bike, run if you are doing a triathlon. And again, this is before and during. First thing to note down is what is the target calories that was created in that calculator? And you can do that for your training and your racing sessions. So let's just mark that down and say for easy math, it was a thousand. And that can be different for whatever session you do, depending on the intensity level and the duration. So starting with training nutrition, why I've divided it up into speed sessions, endurance sessions, and race sessions is because they each have a different physiological outcome. The point of these sessions is to do a different thing. Speed is to obviously improve your speed. Endurance is to improve your ability to go far, which is partially done by your muscles and your mitochondria, but it's also done by your metabolic health and your ability to access both carbs and fat. And then race training is to get you comfortable with race efforts and your race nutrition. Each of these different workout purposes should have a different nutritional component because we're trying to do a different thing in the body. So let's first start with the speed workouts. During these speed workouts that are almost always 90 minutes or less, and basically any workout that is 90 minutes or less, you have enough energy in the form of muscle glycogen stored in your body that you don't really need a whole lot of calories during the workout. So what we wanna do is before the workout, we wanna make sure that you're topped up, that you have a high amount of blood glucose, so you have really quick energy before the speed workout. So we're going to look at somewhere between about 30 to 50 grams of carbs. This is like the carby carbs, the delicious carbs. This is a bowl of cereal, this is a bagel, this is toast, this is pancakes, this is really whatever you want. We want really high blood glucose, easy to access fuel so that you can hit these super high effort levels. And if you've got that nice high blood glucose, you're going to be able to hit higher effort levels because you're not under fueling yourself. During the workout, because it's less than 90 minutes, you tend not to need a whole lot of actual carbs and calories but it does help you to have something in your mouth that tastes nice and sweet. So what I like to do in this case is just fluid at a rate of about one bottle per hour. And this doesn't even have to be very carb heavy. This just needs to taste very sweet because the taste is actually a bit of a neuromuscular reset where it gives your body a little bit of a kick. It takes you out of the suffering. So that alone is going to get you through that speed workout. You're going to be able to hit really high effort levels, which is the purpose of a speed workout. An endurance training workout, this can be anything that you look at and you go, wow, there really isn't a lot of effort in that. That might be a one hour easy swim. It might be a one hour easy ride. It might be a one hour really easy run. It might be a three or four or even five hour easy bike. This is very, very low intensity. Pretty much no intervals included in this whatsoever. So this is maybe one or two sessions per week for about half the year, six months of the year, nine months a year when you're not really training for a specific race. But what we're looking at doing in these endurance sessions is being able to go longer and being able to burn a high amount of fat as fuel so that you can actually have a huge amount of energy to go longer. Now I'm not saying that this should be keto or low carb anymore, but this should be blood sugar controlled. Blood sugar controlled, keeping your blood sugar nice and low is going to allow you to burn a higher amount of fat as fuel. And there was a study done of Ironman Copenhagen athletes that said one of the number one things that was a predictor of better Ironman performance was a higher ability to burn fat as fuel. And if you look at almost 
all elite athletes, they have a high amount of fat burning ability. So how you train for endurance with low blood sugar availability is by before you want to restrict carbohydrates. You want to have mostly protein and fat. So this is an omelet. This is a really big bulletproof coffee. This is a whole lot of nut butter. This is some meats. This is seeds and nuts. Make sure that you're having a fair amount of calories to make sure that you're coming into the session with a lot of energy to execute the session. And then continue that on during the session so we're going to do the same. And if the session is longer than 90 minutes, then you take the calculation from the nutrition calculator and then you ingest that many calories during the session. That's going to make sure that you are not under fueling. It's going to make sure that you're getting the endurance benefit from it. Moving on to the race. This is anything that looks like a very race simulated kind of workout. This is what the endurance workouts will often turn into when we get into race season. In this case, you want to race with a high amount of carbohydrates. You want to race very well topped up with high blood sugar so that you have easy access to fat as fuel. In this case, what you're doing is you're making sure that you have carbs before because you're probably going to have carbs on race day, so this is your bowl of cereal, this is your bowl of oatmeal, this is your muffin, this is whatever it might be. And then right before the workout, you have your first serving of very sugary carbs from this calculated amount of calories that you have to have. So then you have more carbs right before. So again, make sure that you're coming in with lots of carbs. The next thing is that during the session, you want to have, again, carbs equaling roughly this amount of the calories that has been calculated for you. This piece here of making sure that you are doing your race nutrition is one of the biggest things that I see athletes getting wrong. We actually talked with a colleague of ours, Bob Sibahar, who is a very elite level performance nutritionist. And he actually had this to say about the biggest problems that he sees amateur athletes having when it comes to race day. It's what they do here. Hey there, Bob Sibohar here, sport dietitian at Energy Performance. What is the biggest mistake or the biggest blunder nutritionally for triathletes for race day nutrition? That one's actually an easy one. Uh, not practicing race nutrition or more importantly, race specific intensity nutrition during training. So a lot of triathletes will go out on long runs, long bike rides, whatever it is, do some brick workouts, combo workouts at a relatively low to moderate intensity that doesn't mimic triathlon race intensity. You want to try to do that during at least three to five training sessions leading up to your A race or A races, because your gut responds very differently to training intensity relative to the ability to digest food. So take a few sessions leading up to triathlon uh, to race day, practice your nutrition strategy in terms of the same intensity or a very similar intensity. So you allow your gut to be able to see if it can process those calories, the drinks, the bars, the gel gels, chews, whatever you're using. You want to make sure you practice eating that during race specific intensity during training sessions leading up to your A race. Thanks, Bob. And there is a link to Bob's website in the description below at Energy Performance. And another thing that he said that we discussed with Bob is about training the gut. You want to be able to ingest as much carbohydrates as possible on race day, but you don't really want to go and do anything new. So as you are doing this race specific session, try to gradually increase the amount of carbohydrates that you're having. So calculate the amount that you're doing, go about 10 to 20% under what that calculation is to make sure that you are ingesting not too much and you're not going to create digestive stress. And then gradually every single week, build up a little bit more and a little bit more by about 10% each week until you can actually push maybe even a little bit past what that calculation is. This is going to train your gut to accept a good amount of carbohydrates and fuel on race day. Now let's get into what you are going to do on race day. 
Remember we said that you should be having carbs before a race? Well, four hours before the start of whatever you're doing, you want to have your serving of carbs. That's where you are going to have enough time to make sure that it's slightly digested and it's not sitting and sloshing around in your stomach. So before, whether it is swimming, biking, running, or a swim, bike, run, triathlon, we are having carbs for breakfast. In addition to that, immediately before the start of the swim, bike, run, or the triathlon, we are having our first serving of carbs. That first serving of carbs is again going to make sure that your blood glucose is nice and high, you are topped up, and that serving comes out of the calculated amount that you are trying to replace. Then during, you want to divide up the remaining amount of calories that you have calculated that you need to replace equally throughout the approximate duration that you are expecting to be out there. And you want to do it in intervals of between about 17 and 28 minutes or so. That's going to result in you taking in basically nice little slow drips of the amount of calories that you are going to consume to get to your target number. So during, we're doing roughly about 17 to 27 minute intervals. So 17 to 27 minute intervals regularly. So where it starts getting a little bit different is what you do for each of swim, bike, run, or a triathlon. So whether you're doing say a marathon swim or a long bike ride, it doesn't matter if you're taking your calories from a solid or a liquid not a really big difference. You can take this from a gel, a chew, a bar, anything like that, whatever really tickles your fancy because your stomach is not getting sloshed around nearly as much. So this can be solids or liquids. But when it comes to the run, we actually want to take our calories in the form of liquids, being a gel or a Coke or something like that. The reason for that is there is so much more sloshing around that happens in the stomach on the run that your body tends to have a difficult time processing all of those calories when they're in the form of a solid on the run. So if you're in a triathlon, what you'll do is you'll have something before, you obviously won't have anything in the swim, you would then hop on the bike, calculate your evenly divided intervals out of what you still have remaining for the calories that you're trying to consume. And then on the bike, you can take it from whatever you prefer. It can be a solid, it can be a gel, it can be a chew, it can be a bar. But then when you get to the run, you want to definitely switch to either gels or liquids. In addition to that, if you're in a triathlon, you want to increase the amount of calories that you're taking on the bike by about 10%, which allows you to then decrease the amount of calories that you're taking on the run by about 10%. One further caveat to all this, and what we haven't talked about in just a few minutes, is what we're doing with fluids. All along here, I would recommend you take fluids from a light electrolyte drink that has about 10 to 40 calories in it, which is going to help you actually absorb that fluid, but you don't want that fluid, that main hydration fluid, to also be your source of calories. There's a big, big difference between taking your calories in the form of liquids and taking an all-in-one nutritional product. I have heard more horror stories from racers that are taking all of their calories and all of their fluids from an all-in-one than any other nutritional blunder that I see out there. The reason for that is that when you are taking everything from an all-in-one nutrition, you have no levers to pull with what you are doing with your calories and your fluids. So for example, what if you are getting a little bit burpy and you can't actually take on your fluids and you need to switch to water? Well, in that case, if you switch to water, you're going to be under fueling your calories. What if the opposite happens and you can't actually take on any calories? Well, then you're also not going to be taking on any fluids. By separating the two and having 
fluids in your bottle and calories in your pocket, you're able to customize what you have to take when. So if you start getting a little bit thirsty, well, you can increase the amount of fluids that you take without really a whole lot of worry of over calorying yourself and overloading your stomach. If you're getting a little bit of stomach indigestion from the race and you have to switch from your low calorie, just light electrolyte drink to a water, you can still continue to take all of your calories from your calorie source. So you have to split the two. I would really caution you against an all-in-one nutrition. And it has almost batted a thousand with people that said, no, I'm just gonna take it from an all-in-one and I'm gonna follow the formula on the bag. Almost 100% of the time I have seen nutritional disasters happen. This is a lot to take in. So in the description below, we have links to our Triathlon Nutrition Foundation's book, which outlines all of this, to the nutrition calculator that you can bookmark and you can come back to as many times as you want for your training requirements and then your racing requirements. Bob Sibahar's website if you want one-on-one -on -one training to that study that I mentioned to our partner UCAN who makes a very blood sugar stable form of carbohydrates that I really like using and if you go to ucan.co forward slash Taryn and buy anything through that link you'll get a 20% discount and a link to our training app that I'll plug because every single workout has recommended nutrition for it to make sure that you're getting the most out of that workout where it outlines how many calories you should have where you should take the calories calories from, whether it's a carb source or a non-carb source, and all of our athletes find that really helpful to make sure that they're nailing every single workout as well as possible. Links are in the description below to all of that. Thank you for watching Motivators. If you're looking for a training plan that incorporates these methods that is as good as a one-on-one -on -one coach but as inexpensive as doing it yourself, check out our Motive training app that covers triathlons, running races, duathlons, swim runs, and cycling events. It's a link in the description below where you can check out your customized training plan for free. Also, if you rather listen to these tips, we also publish these videos in podcast format on the Terran's Motive Method podcast, so you can check that out. And if you don't want to do either of those things but you found this video helpful hit us up with a virtual high five by smashing the like button below later motivators